live by way of YouTube or Facebook. In case you miss any portion of the broadcast, please go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org or, oh, let me repeat that, libertyhouseusa.org or you go to our YouTube channel, you type in our name, Liberty House International Church, and then you can have all the videos that we have there and enrich your spiritual life. Hallelujah. If you're a lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, still a student of the Word of God, then you tune into the right kind of broadcast. Hallelujah. Here we are excited about the Word of the Lord. Our mission is to transform lives through the Word of God. So we don't play with the Word of God. We take it serious. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to hear something interesting. Well, anyway, I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. And uh, in case I say anything and uh, it doesn't quite, you know, uh, get into your boots the way you should get in there, please uh, don't throw it away. Just go through the scriptures and check it out for yourself. Hallelujah. Because I say things that are not that popular, but trust me, it's in the book. Amen. All right, so I'm going to uh, look at this uh, topic. Um, we're talking about giving. I'm going to talk about giving. And I'm going to start by reading from Mark chapter 12, from uh, verse 41. Given a sensitive in the church, the body of Christ, Christendom. Given a sensitive because some are struggling financially. Given a sensitive because some have uh, lost their jobs or whatever occupation they have is not going well, given a sensitive because some have experienced abuse in the church from leaders that they trusted, leaders that are supposed to be role models, that are to lead exemplary lives, but somehow they failed. These leaders failed them. They were abused, they were used, and as a result, uh, they don't even want to hear anything about giving. Well, I'm here to tell you this. Um, so far as the life is concerned, or so far as we are in this life, we are going to have challenges. Bible uses a powerful word that we normally don't use. And that's the word perseverance. You can't live by faith without the virtue of perseverance. Perseverance means, in a working kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, dynamics of the word, is this. It means that there's something that is coming against you 
there are challenges, there are oppositions, but you have to persevere. Meaning that you still have to continue the journey. You still have to continue to move in the face of adversities, in the face of challenges, in the face of opposition. You still in the face where it seems like it's discouraging, it looks hopeless and helpless. You keep moving. That's perseverance. And um, if we understand that word, then of course we are not going to give in to people who disappointed us, especially people in uh, um, places of prominence. I'm talking about authority kind of uh, figures, spiritual leaders, where they, um, they use gimmicks to take money from people, they use gimmicks to get money from people to enrich themselves, to build their own empires and whatever. You don't have to let them stop you. Don't let them stop you. You have to endure. You have to persevere. You have to go past that kind of abuse or that kind of um, uh, outsmarting you in some cases because in some cases you thought you were outsmarting them and they outsmarted you. Whichever the case may be, please don't let them stop you. Because the word of God still is alive. And what God says concerning your rational, reasonable service, yielding yourself to him, presenting yourself to him, and being obedient to his directives and directions for your life, still holds today. So don't let them stop you. The fact that one you tasted one apple and it was that bad, you have not stopped eating apple. The fact that we discovered one um, counterfeit uh, dollar bill, that doesn't mean we, we stop using the dollar bill. So depending on where you are, whatever currency you use, we're always going to have the fake or the counterfeit with us. Don't let them dictate you what you ought to do. Let the word of God still continue to speak to you. Hallelujah. Don't give them that authority. Don't, don't give them that power over your life. Amen. So I'm going to touch on some things to bring, uh, as it were, clarity, to bring uh, some kind of uh, consolation, to bring encouragement, uh, motivation to some, and uh, to lift some people up where they are down because of what things they have experienced. Hallelujah. Now, let's first read, uh, before we go to Jesus, let's first go to... Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Okay. We'll read from the New King James Version, please. All right. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is the responsibility of every child of God, every son of God, daughter of God. This is it. This presenting of your bodies, you have to do that. You are presenting your life to the Lord. And it's on a daily basis. Why are you presenting your, uh, your bodies to Him? The Bible says you are presenting, first it starts by saying, by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. Then it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. You are doing this presentation to God, this yielding to God, this coming into alignment with God. That's what it is. It's not about your wishes, it's not about your desires, it's not about your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, but it's about God to start with. Now, because we know that He owns us, because we are purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. He owns us. We are not of our own. We have to do this. He doesn't want to force us. He wants us to freely do this. Now, where giving is concerned, no one will be able to give to God anything material, anything that tangible can be touched. Then we can talk about time and other things, strength and all that, uh, what expertise, or wisdom, knowledge, whatever. You can give any of these things if first you don't come to this place of presenting yourself unto the Lord. It says that's your reasonable, rational service. 
Let's have other translations and let's see uh, what he uses. Um, hallelujah. NLT. It says, And dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies. Wow. Nobody has to force you. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done. And I love this rendition or translation. Because of all that he has done for you. Because of all that he has done for you. I'll say that again. Because of all that God has done for you. Giving starts from this point. It starts from this understanding. It's about God. We are talking about God who gives abundantly. Everything that he gives, everything that he does, he does in abundance. He gave you his best. He gave you his all. That's why at times I have a problem with people who have a station. They plateaued around the, the 10% kind of thing. God is not a 10% God. You have to understand that when that came about, came up, uh, about that was another law. And I pretty believe, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, that God realized that people were stingy. They were miserly. They were not one to even give. Therefore, he had to start them with something. And it was a law. Can you imagine? Just like in this land, you have to pay taxes. If it wasn't so, a lot of people would not want to pay. And even though we have that as a law, the tax, yet some people try to evade it. And then that, that lands them in trouble. Because the law will come after you. There's penalty if you fail to pay your tax. Now, Look at that scenario and bring it into the church where the children of God are concerned. Then we have to ask ourselves the question, how many people are willing, willing, they are ready, they just want to give to God. They just want to give to God without any cohesion, without any promise of getting something back. Without any promise of uh, giving them some connection, contact, or something here and there. How many people are willing to just give? Why? Because for centuries, the church has been mistaught. And uh, this is what they do. They see God as like uh, some kind of gambler, chief of the gambling kind of uh, uh, pool. And then, and so you put in your money, the jackpot, uh, and then you pull the lever, and then you make some money. So it's like, if they don't see how they're going to get something back, they don't want to, they don't feel like giving. And they don't, they, they don't see that God has moved in their specific, particular kind of situation, they don't see why they have to give. Now, I call this kind of people in, emotional or what? Uh, need based givers. Emotional, you talk with their emotions again. They look at their need and what they want God to move, move where their need is concerned. Then they give. But giving is not contingent on that. Nobody has to hype you up before you give. You give based on love and understanding. Understanding of who God is. He's your source. He's giving you life. You start from there. For all that He has done for you. Hallelujah. There's a song like that for all you've done. For all you've done. Da, 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 da. Something like that. Lord, you, you for, there's a song like that, right? Yeah. For all you've done. Lord, you, you. Something like that, yeah. That's the way it should be, okay? Now, I don't know where the song came, came out <laughs> into my head. So let's continue. Let's finish this. Because of all that he has done, let uh, what let them let them be what a living, a living and holy sacrifice. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the what way to worship him. This is truly really the way to worship Him. I want to say that again. This is truly the way to worship Him. So then we'll ask the question again. What is the way 
to worship God. Hallelujah. And then we have to read the verse again. What is the way to worship God? We we'll read the whole thing. It's by the Lord. Giving your body. Personalize it. You're giving, I'm giving my body to God. I'm giving my life. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul said it that way. So I'm giving my whole life to the Lord. A living sacrifice. This way, not dead. You see, because God wants to still talk through you, He wants to touch lives through you, He wants to hide people through you, He wants to advise people through you, He wants to give to people through you. Everything that God wants to do, He does it through us, His church, the body of Christ. And I'm going to add something to it, it's going to shock you. But let's finish uh, what we are reading here first. Hallelujah. So by giving your life for all that he has done, when you see your life as a sacrifice, just like the animal, the then that was put on the altar, the animal can run away, the animal can say, no, I don't want you to sacrifice me. The animal can say, you know, today is not a good day for me. Let's do it tomorrow. The animal cannot say that. You see, and if you look at it, it's powerful because Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and he did not open his mouth. He did not utter a word. He presented himself to God. He yielded himself as a living sacrifice. So you and I can come into sonship. You and I can come into the kingdom of God. You and I can be sons of God, family with God. He did it willingly. He presented himself. We are asked to do the same thing. Thank God in our case, we are not going to be nailed on the cross. Nobody's going to be spitting on our face. Nobody's going to slap us across our face or whatever. You know, nobody's going to do that. But we willingly, based on love and understanding, based on all that he has done for us, we should give ourselves. And the Bible calls that this is the kind that he finds acceptable. Mm -hmm. Truly, the way to worship him. And I'm going to chip in something that will blow the minds of some people, because I don't think they, they see it that way. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When we say, we say things like, um, God first, am I right? Do we say that? God first. And it's true. Jesus said, yeah, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In the Old Testament, it says, uh, the greatest commandment, or the first commandment, is to love God. And the second is to love your neighbor. So, vertical first God, horizontal, your fellow human being. All right? Now, let's look at this. Let's break it down. We are accepting this. Have you ever seen God show up in this uh, natural kind of your home, your working place, grocery store, wherever you go, and then you are serving him? No, the way we serve God is by serving our fellow human being. I'm going to say that again. I was having this conversation with a uh, fellow minister this week. The way we serve God is by serving our fellow human being. Because you never see God come down and there's this Jesus coming before you. So then okay, you are going to give your best. No, it's never, ever going to happen. When you even see an angel and you try to worship the angel, if you are not careful, the angel will slap you. No, no, I'm just joking. The angel will tell you, I'm, the, I'm a fellow servant. Don't worship him. Worship, well, don't worship me. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I want to say that again. Those who are waiting to see God himself, Jesus himself, or the Holy Spirit somewhere to serve, it doesn't work. The way, we, the way to serve God is to serve your fellow man. Because he said, if you do it unto 
any of the least of these ones, you've done it unto me. And I want to bring this out very well in um, Matthew 20, 28, Jesus said, for the Son of Man, we can go there so they see it. Wow. We go, you see, when you do this, we, Bible calls that worship. For the Son of Man has now come to be served, but rather to serve. He came not to be ministered unto, but he to minister. Okay. Let's read this together. Read it. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for men. Why this? Why did he do it? Because that's what the Father asked him to do. He was committed to the Father. He was serving the Father. But how did he serve the Father? By serving the people, fellow human beings. Do you guys get the picture? Yeah. By serving fellow human beings. He didn't leave all the people and said, Oh, me, my mission here is to serve God. So I'm only serving God. By serving God is serving man. I'll say that again. Serving God is serving man. Serving God is serving man. That's how it is. So if you have understanding of who the Father is, his goodness, his love, his faithfulness. That is going to determine the quality of your service. The quality of your service. The depth of your service. The motive behind your service. And when we serve, the Bible says we should serve in love. Hallelujah. Amen. And it also says when we serve, we should serve as unto the Lord. Yeah. I'm throwing all these things out there for us to know that somehow, some way, we had it wrong. We've, we've drawn a line, separation, sort of. God is like way up here. Man is down here. So when I finish serving God up there, then I'm going to come down here and then deal with man. By serving God, is serving your fellow man. So that's why it says, everything you do, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to his name. You see, he gave his life as a ransom for men. When he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and he dedicated himself, he devoted himself, consecrated himself, you know, to die on the cross, the cross of the Father, he was obedient unto death. When he did that, he said, Not my will, your will be done. Hallelujah. And he dedicated himself. He gave his life. That's our reasonable word. Bible calls our worship. Service. That's how we do it. But here, was he laying down his life for God the Father or God the Holy Spirit? No, he laid down his life for human beings. So he served God by serving men. According to the stipulation, according to the instruction, according to the word, uh, command of the Lord. So here we are not just talking about just doing something or something. Because, oh, this kid, I'm going to do this one. Oh, that's how we serve anyway. We pick and choose. Oh, this kid, oh, well, I can't do that. I can't. Things that we can even do, we always say, I just can't do this now. I can't afford this now. But we know that at times when we say, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, we are just being lazy. Just that because our love, our love tank is, is not full. It's somehow quarter. So it's when we feel low, then whatever we are going to do for somebody, our service becomes low. When we feel high, then our service, our service to man to become more high. When we think that the person measures up, then our service is high. When we look at the person, the person doesn't measure up. I don't like that person too well. No, I don't even care about that person. Then our service is low. You see, but that's not how Jesus served. He gave his all. I'm talking about giving. He gave his all. And giving his all is giving his best. He didn't say, these people who live on this side of town, they are nice people. So, well, I'm going to die for them. These people over here, they are not too good. And the other day I visited them, even they were throwing stones at me. So, I'm going to die for them. He didn't do that. He didn't say, oh, these people, 
you know, they didn't finish their, their, their what do you call it, their, their college education. These people, the color of their skin, it doesn't look good. These people, they, they are too tall, they are too short. So I'm not, I'm not going to die for them. I'm dying for the kid one. Kid once, that's not what he did. Wow. He came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's what we have to do. He gave his life. Not that, okay, Father, you know what? Hmm. I have some plans, oh, Father, I have some plans. Look, I'm here and I have a lot of things I want to take care of. I have places to go, people to see. I'm not ready. So you know what? Instead of giving my life, I'm just going to give you. I have, I have, I've got these savings, you know, I have this money. In fact, I'm going to give you one of my businesses. Use it. Use one of my businesses. But my life, mm -mm, I'm not giving you my life. I'm not ready for that. That is how we serve normally. Whatever God is asking us to give, we don't give that. We find something else to give. And that is not the service that, is, that he finds acceptable. For him to find our service to man acceptable, it has to be exactly what he's asking us to do. Hallelujah. And I told you my story over and over. Um, when I was going, to, uh, uh, the Lord touched my heart to give a pair of shoes uh, to somebody. Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You want that story? I told you that story. <laughs> I didn't do that. I took a pair of trousers or pants. I took a shirt and I took a necktie. I passed it nicely and I gave it to the person. But what he said to me, you see, what he said to me to do was to give the pair of shoes. I love the pair of shoes too much, too new. I've not used them for more than, I've not used them, worn them even more than five times or three times, possibly. And I said, no way. When I bought it, it was expensive. I used all my money to buy it. I mean, this is the latest one that I have, and I like the way it is. And I'm not going to give it. And so I give the pants, I give the nectar, and I give the shirt. So God gave me another opportunity to obey Him. You see, delay obedience is still what? Disobedience. Partial obedience is still disobedience. Because God has His timing in everything that He does. Whew. Let me give you this instance. Why do you think that he held the womb of Elizabeth for that long? Because Jesus had to be born at a specific time for the work that he was going to do. And John the Baptist was going to be the forerunner. So everything had to line up. So in the same way, if Jesus touches you, the Lord is speaking to you to go do something it doesn't have to make sense to you before because you never know what is going on in the life of the person. Let's take, for instance, somebody that's graphic. So let me, let me try and bring something else. But where they are, they are about to do something foolish. You are the only person God is sending to that person to go talk to this person. So they just what? Drop the agenda. Not die, but need to fulfill the purpose of God. Then he said, uh, no, right now I'm in the middle of something. I just can't drop this. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, because my agenda was uh, today to do this. I have to, when I finish this, yeah, I have to make a quick dash uh, to uh, uh, this store and get this done. You know, tomorrow is so and so and so and so and birthday. And I have this event coming out, so you know, okay, when I finish that, I'm going to go over to that place. We have we come up with all these things because of lack of understanding. We don't even feel the agency of the Holy Spirit when He speaks to us. 
Our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is not that sharp. Wow. Can I can I get to talk or say all that I want to say today? Because a lot of things are coming up. He gave his life as a ransom. Are you holding your life back? Are you holding your life? Are you acting like a what? A, a, a stingy person? What are you holding back? He gave his all. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, let's go to the Mark chapter um, 12. And look, let's look at what Jesus did from verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. We are reading from the New King James Version, Mark chapter 12 from 4 to 1. We are talking about giving. We have established it. It starts with God as a source, understanding who it is. Like Jesus, he laid down his life. He gave his all. We also, we have to present our life to the Lord, just like Jesus Christ did. Hallelujah. No, this can wait. This scripture came in first, and he, he went now it's back. Let's let's look at First Peter chapter five from verse one. First Peter chapter five from verse one. Okay, let's do it together. The elders who are among you, I what exhort, I who am a fellow what elder. So here Peter talking. He, he was a follower of Jesus Christ. He's one of the apostles. But he's addressing himself as an elder because at that time, yet still today, an elder is a shepherd, an elder is a pastor. You know, and then we can use the word uh, overseer, uh, which also can be used for bishop. Right? So the elders who are among you are exalt. I who am. Um, uh, who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the what glory that will be revealed. Let's read on. Hmm. Look, Bible says Peter left everything and followed Jesus. Wow. He left everything. He had a business. And he can tell the struggle. He wasn't used to this. When Jesus was raised, he went back to fishing. But then the Lord showed up and reminded him, and he dropped it. And this time he dropped it for good. He left everything. He followed Jesus. Look at how powerfully the Lord used it. Ay, 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 ay. I want to add the way we give also somehow reveals to what extent the law can use us. They are connected. I'll say that again. The way we serve, when I say give, I'm talking about serving. The way we serve, God Jesus said, freely have you received, freely give. In Matthew 10, 8, when he said, um, what, uh, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. So freely have you received freely give Matthew 10 and 8. Alright, so freely. Well, they were not giving money in this case, but they were serving. They were serving people with healing. In case uh, somebody who is dead, they were serving the person with life. Freely have you received. Now, what is going on in the body of Christ? Some people have the audacity to charge. I'm talking about some spiritual leaders. They will charge. Before they give you a counsel, before you even sit, bef uh, you sit before them. The basket is at the door, so when you are entering, you drop your seat before you go and sit before them. They are charging. Meanwhile, the gift is not theirs. I know somebody will argue with me, you know, in another way. And some of them, they have come about some of these things because. They are not being taken care of by the local assemblies the way they should be taken care of. 
And so they have come up with smart ways so they won't go hungry. Their families will not, you know, suffer. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you. You see, it refers to the congregants, believers, as the flock of God. Jesus being the Lord, shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the bishop of our souls. Serving as overseers, bishops, not by what? Compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. So that is the role, that is the composure, that is the posture, that is the attitude, that should be the attitude of the spiritual leader. I mean, this is not because I've tried every kind of profession, business, it's not working. So this is the last result for me. Because this is, I've realized that, you know, people who are spiritual leaders, they make money. So we need to go in there. You know, nobody should be forcing you. You should do it willingly. Not for dishonest gain. Not for dishonest gain. Let's give, uh, let's have the uh, uh, message. Verse 2. Shepherd the flock of God. Here is my concern. That you care for God, for God's flock. With all the what diligence of a shepherd, not because you have to, but because you want to please God, not what calculating. Wow, not cal <laughs> not calculating what you can get out of what what you are doing, but what acting spontaneously. Lovely. Let's have a amplified version. Feed, tend, I'm sorry, tend, nature, guard, guide, and, and fold, and fold, wow, that's, that's serious, and fold the flock of God that is in your, that is your responsibility. That's what I was saying. It's the responsibility of the spiritual leader, right? <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Of course, not by coercion, because I'm getting things, and I, I, I want to do this well. <laughs> not by coercion or constraint, but willingly. Not what dishonorably motivated by the what advantages of profits belonging to the office. That's what we call the benefits of the office. Some people are spiritual leaders now because of the benefits. They enter in there, they push themselves by eagerly and cheerfully. Let's go to verse 3. God wants spiritual leaders to be examples. Not what domineering as arrogant, dictatorial, and overbearing persons, but that is what we have in the body of Christ. And uh, when you lead like I do, in a humble way, in a loving way, you are not bossy, you are not a, what, a dictator, you are not an author authoritarian, people don't like it that way. You know, and some take advantage of you. That's, that's what is going on in the body of Christ, because they are so used to this style, this kind of leadership. But that is not from God. That's why I say not to domineering, as arrogant, dictatorial, and overbearing persons. No, that's not how you do it. God has, a, God has given us free will. So that's the way it should be. Go to some local assemblies, you realize that it's law, 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 very legalistic. It's not free will. It's, it's not like as you know, the Lord leads, or as according to the word, they have their own laws. That's why they've surrounded themselves with all kinds of whatever. Let's go. 
Let's take it from the beginning. Not a domineering, as arrogant, dictatorial, and overbearing or persons over those in your charge, but being examples, patterns, and models of Christian living to the flock, the congregation. Everything a spiritual leader does should be in sync in line with present truth with the word of God. You see, and you should know that you are leading and people are following. If you are leading, why are, where are you leading them? Where are you taking them? That's the question. You are leading. Where? Where are you going? Where are you off to? You are leading them into truth. To walk in the word. To be in step with the one who died for them. Like Jesus led the disciples. That's how he served them. And that's how every uh, spiritual leader, pastor, shepherd, apostle, uh, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, that is how they have to conduct their lives. But what we are seeing here, he, I mean, what we are seeing in the body of Christ is different from what we are reading. And it shocks me that we see people following what is what my Bible is describing. There are a lot of Christians, they are following people like that. They are domineering leaders, arrogant leaders, uh, what, authoritarians, dictators, and yet they are following them. So here, do they have respect for God or they have respect for men? Are they presenting their bodies, giving their life to the Lord or giving their lives to men? And that is why some of them are abused. There are some that they are innocent. They don't know these things. And so they take everything that the spiritual leader tells them. But if you know such a word, and you can tell by the conduct of the minister, the spiritual leader, that is not in conformity with the word of God, you have no business staying under such a person. Because if you stay there and you give them the support, you are enabling them. That's what it is. You don't have to, you have no business being in such a place. Hallelujah. And you know, at times, some gravitate towards that because also in them, it's the same thing. Best of the same fairness. All right, now let's go to the Jesus thing. And I can read this in the film. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much. Why would Jesus sit opposite the treasury? Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Probably it was just a place that he was sitting. I don't, I don't know much about that, so I can't say much. But <laughs> what I'm, I'm uh, concerned about says, and saw how the people put money in the treasury. Let's go to the next verse, 42. We are still in Mark 12, 42. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make what? A quadrant. A quadrant. A quadrant? Okay. Now, have you realized that today, 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 who is going to draw coins? When they come with their coin, you know what they do? They, they hold title to the coin. They are even ashamed to come forward. And then they lower their arm as long as it can go to reach the bottom so it won't make noise and drop it. Why? Because they've been shamed. You get it? They've been shamed. Because this is a call. Those who can give this, they start from the high numbers. Those who can give this. I, I saw somebody taking an offering. That's the, that's the, the, the person did. And I said, why that? So let's say, for instance, you say, okay, all those who can give, uh, let's say, 500. Come and put it in an offering basket. Okay. All those who can give 300, come, put it in an offering basket. All those who can give 200, come, put it in an offering basket. You see what I'm saying? The same thing. All those who can give 100, come, put it in an offering basket. All those who can give, uh, what? Uh, did I mention 100 already? Yeah, 50, come, put it in an offering basket. All those who can give 20, come, put it in an offering basket. All those who can now give what? 20, come, put it in an offering basket. All those who can give 5, Come, put it in the offering basket. Those who can give one, just come, put it in the offering basket. What is this guy doing? He's shaming people. 
If you if he has said something like it's offering time, bring your seed. Bring your seed. Whether it's uh, 500000 one dollar, bring your seed. But to for the whole church to be guarded, then it begin. Those who have five hundred come. Then those who have three hundred, they come. Those who have two hundred, they come. And then the one who has just one. And then everybody is looking at the one who has one. And he's rushing. And then it comes to drop in the offering basket. You are shaming people. I mean, I'm asking myself, what is the motive by saying, calling out these different figures? Offering time is offering time. And we are going to go into it before we shut down. Okay, so let, let's read on. <laughs> Uh, we are what? 40, 42. The long video came, drop everything. Yeah, so 43. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, As surely as I, uh, as I said to you, that this poor widow has what? Put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. Why? 44 explains it. She's referred as to the widow. 44, verse 24. For they all put in out of what? Yeah. The abundance. But she, out of her what? Poverty. Like uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Deep poverty, they gave. Put in all that she had. Her whole what? Wow. You see how God looks at giving? You see how God looks at giving? This bowl, they had it in abundance. They gave out of the abundance. I mean, like today, some celebrity can sign a check for a million dollars and it doesn't affect them. They don't even feel it. You know? But somebody will give, let's say, 10,000 and it's like hmm, a big chunk of their savings. That's it. They feel it. You know, but some of them say, wow, that guy, you give a million. I mean, you give a million. I mean, woo. You know, the one who gave the ten is like, oh, we don't even mention it. Mm-hmm. The ten thousand, uh, what is ten thousand to a million? Uh, don't mention your name. But look at what Jesus said. He said, she has given more than all these people. Why? You give according to what you have. So let's go to Second Corinthians now. Second Corinthians. Before we do that, let's start by 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, they were collecting money in this case. Because some of the saints refer to Christians. So you are a saint, I'm a saint. Alright? Collect, uh, concerning the collection for the saints, they were trouble. As I have what given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. So look at something here. And I, I'm, I'm going to try this cautiously. Spiritual leaders have the right to give instructions, directives, to uh, give commands. Where let's say collection of uh, money, or we call offering, is concerned. Now, this is not to be this office or this privilege is not to be taken lightly or taken for granted. Anybody who serves in this capacity must do it out of reverence towards the Lord. And then also this collection is not to go into the spiritual leader's pocket. So he's not ordering people to give so he will pocket it or go and use it for himself. It's not like that. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read on. So they must do, uh, the other folks must also do that. Let's read on. Let's read together. Read. On the first day of the week, let each one of you, what, lay something aside. You see, it doesn't come with the figure, but lay something aside. Why is he saying that? Storing up as he may what? Prosper. You see? As he may what? Prosper. That there may be no what? Collections when I come. 
Let's read uh, Old King James. As he may prosper. That's the key thing. Okay? Read. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. So regularly. You see, that, that is something that you are thinking about, something that is on your heart. Not that you get to church and someone will say, Oh, I forgot my church, church, church uh, what? Not church book. Check, check book. I forgot my check book. Oh, I left my ATM card. Oh, this, that, that. You know, at times, that can happen genuinely. Because I know I've left the house before where I forgot my whole wallet. That can happen. But if that continues, always when I'm going to church service, you don't even prepare your award. Giving before you show up, and then when it's giving time, it's like, oh, oh, my checkbook. Wow. I didn't even get, you have your wallet, but I don't have your ATM card. You don't have your bank card. And that goes on and goes on. It says something. It says volumes about you. Where your heart is. Can we say amen to that? So let every one of you lay by him in store. You have to be ready with that. That means it should be of concern to you. It should be on your priority list. As God has prospered him. So you see, giving is based on that. God prospers you. Because he's not going to ask you to give something that he has, he has not given you. He's not going to tell you to love when he has not given you love. So in the same way, when it comes to giving, he's not going to tell you give your time, serve somebody with your time. Serve or give uh, your strength to somebody. Serve them with your strength when he's not giving you strength. No, you have it. He, he gives you. And whatever service he calls you to do, it means he's measured you up. He gave some what? Five. He gave some two. He gave some one. So he, he sized you. He's weighed you already. He knows what you're capable of doing. And then he tells you to do it. So don't be like Gideon and say, no, I can't do this because I'm the least. And I'm, uh, you know, and, and even uh, my family is the weakest. I can't do this. You see, he was looking at himself naturally, but he wasn't listening to the Lord when he was telling him, look, you are more than you're thinking about yourself. So we all have to measure ourselves in the light of the scriptures, in the light of what God has said about us. Not what school we attended, not what houses we live in, not the kind of clothes we wear or the kind of cars we drive. No, that's not how you measure yourself. It's about the grace of God bestowed upon you. Hallelujah. When it happens this way, when it gets there, everything is all set, ready to go. Hallelujah. Now let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We'll read verse 12. So we are looking at how to give, where giving is concerned, presenting our bodies. The way we serve God is to serve man. Hallelujah. Let's back up to um, verse 11 first. So it will flow. Now therefore, perform the word the doing of it. Because they're still talking about uh, giving. And it says that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be what? A performance. A performance. If there's a willingness, we, we say, there's a saying, where there's a will, there's a way. So when you are ready, the willingness is there, then the performance, what? Also, uh, out of that which you have. I love that. A performance also out of that which you have. Do you get it? Okay. Next verse. Let's read it in uh, the New King James. <laughs> For if there, if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. That's how simple it is. That's why in this house, anytime we have to do something, and let's say you have to buy a chair, they say the chair costs this much. So everybody give towards it. If everybody can do at least this, you know, because everybody can do, let me just do it here. If everybody can do $20, you know, but then we add it. We say, if you don't have $20, 
don't let it bother you. If you don't have it to give, don't let it bother you. You make sure we say it. And we say, okay, whatever you can give, just give. If you don't have anything to give, don't let it bother you. Don't go into uh, uh, some kind of complex, inferiority kind of complex situation. Don't. Because it's based on what you have. Hallelujah. And everything we do, my time, I'm looking at you. Let's, I'll shut it down. Let's end with Colossians 3, 23. So everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord, giving thanks to his name. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, do it what? Heartily. As to the Lord. And not to men. This is, this is how beautiful it is. Verse 17. If I have it right. Whatever. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving your blessings. Giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's it. This is simple. So, if you have this understanding, that's going to determine the quality of your service. Hallelujah. Many years ago, based on Revelation, when we're even, we started in the basement of a commercial building. When we invited a guest speaker, I always say this, I'm not going to treat the gift of God. It's a ministry gift. I'm not going to treat this person like nobody. I have to honor them. Based on even where we are, we'll do the best that we can to honor them. And every every guest that we had, they were their minds were blown. We put them the best we talk. We give them the best in our area. And they were shocked. And some some said it to me. They've gone to places where they have they had more many in congregation more than us, and yet what they received was like an insult, dishonor. So it's it just is from understanding. It's from a place of love. It's a it's a place of uh, transparency, sincerity, worship. You understand that as worship. That's here we like to give right after what worship because giving our financial seed is also part of worship. And we don't want to forget that giving is not just for taking care of, uh, it's basically taking care of people. So getting an organization going, running the organization, I'm talking about an organization that is in the center of the will of God, doing the assignment of God. It needs to be funded. So when you give, you have to look at where you are. That Okay, with this congregation, with what we are doing, what I'm giving, will that help? Is it pushing the organization forward? Or it's not doing anything? It's, it's just like a drop in the, in the ocean, a drop of water. Now, more so to those who can do more, but they are not doing. Because at times we can become comfortable and say, oh, well, in fact, in this congregation, I'm the, I'm the number one giver. Nobody gives more than I do. And you know, people are giving $20 and I'm giving $100 and all that. No, 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 please, your assignment is different. Probably the Lord wants you to take care of foot the whole bill. So nobody even gives. And then you are thinking, oh, well, I give this. So, well, eh, I'm, not, I'm better than so and so. Oh, I'm not like that one day. You know, at least I give this. Please, don't flatter yourself. It's about giving your all to the Lord for His service. And that ends it for tonight. And I charge you with the words in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 1 and 13, for freedom Jesus has made you free, and therefore stand and do not be entangled with the new companions, but by love, serve one another. Love you dearly. Thanks for tuning in.